Hey everyone, welcome to the Tuned and Strong podcast. I am, oh, I did that better. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days we'll get it right. She is, she is Angela McHouston of Music Strong. <laughs> I, I said the name right. <laughs> God. And this is Dr. Dr. Jen Cabas May of Tuned and Toned Performance. <laughs> So speaking of words that are difficult, as, as you all know, we have Excellent a hard time segment. for whatever reason with our with our intro. But speaking of words that are difficult, um, what, what I want to talk, we both want to talk about the word strength today, the word strength um, and why, like how it. OK, so we'll, we'll just introduce it first. I'm a little rambling today. I'm over caffeinated. She's recovering from a concussion. It's a good combination. <laughs> <laughs> So, (laughs) you know, I want to talk about the word strength today. So um, I know last two episodes ago, episode 51, 51, 51 or 52. I don't remember the one where I'm, I'm really cantankerous. The one that I called spicy in the show. Oh, the one where you're real extra Um, spicy. Oh yeah. Extra spicy. So extra spicy day. Um, Angela, you were talking about um, the Nashville Musicians Union and yep. um, how the guy who was trying to help you with that was like, well, it says strength for musicians and that that can't be, or strength training for musicians, that can't be right. That's not all you do. And it threw him. And um, I'm launching um, this, well, launches, it starts May of, uh, May, geez, March of 2022. I am starting a musician specific class, mm-hmm. which is going to be strength training. Um, and as we've discussed on the podcast a bunch of times, you know, strength training for musicians doesn't mean getting big and, and you know, jacked and tan. It means, <laughs> it means performance, performance related movements to help you get strong enough to be able to perform with longevity. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Um, but I was talking to a colleague of mine and I, I won't, I won't say the name um because i really respect this person she's probably gonna be mad at me for ignoring her advice um (laughs) but i told her you know well i want to call it in the in the advertisements and the promos i want to call it strength for musicians because on a very fundamental level that's what it is that's what i do and there's all of this like uh word manipulation to get around it you know what i mean and she she had that same reaction too of like i don't know that you want to call it that because like you should call it body enhancement or performance. I had a different person performance training. I'm like performance training. If you tell a classical musician that they're going to think it's some sort of master class or, yeah. you know, um, performance training it, it was, has nothing to do with exercise. That has to right. be your instrument. Right. Now training for performance is what I would consider what we do in the gym. Yes. But that's still but sounds rather ambiguous. Like, what does that it's, mean? It really is. It's very kind of, we're dancing around the subject because we're afraid of the word strength. Um, now, like I said, that this person's going to probably be mad at me for ignoring your advice, but um, I went with Strength for Musicians as the title because it's just very, I don't, I'm tired of doing the word dance, you know? Yeah. Um, I want you to know right good. off the bat what it is. Right. No questions, no questions about it. Now, Am I going to have to do a lot of explaining as to how it cross applies? Yes. In the advertisements, sure. To a lot of people, not everyone. Um, the rock guys, they get it. You know, that's that's yeah. what I learned this week. I, I learned that the rock guys get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you trained a rock band, right? I did. They are Fine. fantastic, by the mm-hmm. way. Absolute blast to work with. Um, that was a great session. Um, but they got it, you know, like most of them have gym experience anyway. And so it wasn't a big leap for them to go, oh yeah, of course that's gonna be, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just I wanted to unpack that aversion to the word, the word strength. That we're so afraid of it, you know. You know, just thinking about what you just said, it's like not all musicians are afraid of the weight room or any of that business. And like no. we understand that there's strength, but we forget that we, we understand how exercising and strength training makes us feel. We understand that. And mm-hmm. we even understand as musicians, how that makes us feel, but we don't understand mm-hmm. the cross application to how it directly impacts our performance. Right. And that's, right. that's where people get 
weirded out and confused. And they think, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking about the guy who called me yesterday and asked if I sold keyboards. <laughs> What you want to talk about? I, somebody explained to me how when you see music strong fitness training for musicians, that makes you wonder. Y'all sell keyboards? Hey, does that mean guitar lessons? I mean, like literally, th- these are the phone calls I get. I don't. So, so please educate us on this. But when it comes to that that cross application of how it directly impacts or affects your performance, we get confused. Mm-hmm. Or and, and then we think strength, and we're like, oh, but that means this other thing. Well, right, not necessarily. Right. So, yeah. what we were talking about yesterday, yeah. or the other episode, was like, okay, look, when you think of a physical therapist, you don't think strength training, but that's exactly what they do. Yes. The same thing. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's right. But if you call it therapy, then it's okay. That oh, that's true. That's true. Like, so maybe I should be calling this strength therapy. Like, <laughs> I'm so confused on what that means. Like, what? <laughs> you know? like, does that mean my my strong like strength that sits on a couch and talks about I, feelings? Like, I, that, that doesn't know, you know? None of that makes I sense. Mean, but if you think about it, we don't have um, as as a at least in the classical world, we don't have an aversion to the term therapy. No. You're getting massage therapy. No problem. That's all acceptable. Physical therapy. That's acceptable. Um, you know, therapy, mental therapy, therapy. Mental therapy. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Counseling. That's where it's totally normal. Because we're all, you know, at least a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> what? I think you called me neurotic last week, right? That was last week. <laughs> me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. It's okay. I'm well, neurotic. That's a, that's <laughs> right, you were, I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm neurotic. No, that flute players have a, we have a specialness to us. I'm not going to lie, but neurotic, I think oboe players would tell you they're neurotic. You yeah. know, they just get just into the reeds and the making, you know, mm-hmm. but if you're yeah. an oboist, please, please correct us on that if we're wrong. <laughs> Well, anyway. it's, it's a different, so just to be crystal clear, different types of neuroses for different instruments. You know, yes, clarinetists are neurotic. We're just, it's different, very different kind of neurotic from oboists and very different kind of neurotic from flutists, you know, um, which are all different than string players. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's but you, fair. you have, you have to be, if you're going to spend that much time in a room by yourself doing the same thing over and over and over until you get it right. What that makes us sound. <laughs> that's, that's an it. When you put it that yeah. way, but it's true. It's true. So anyway, back to the word strength. <laughs> right, right, right. So <laughs> yeah, it's just that like, oh, but, 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 you know, we were talking so, about therapy. We don't have any aversion. We to were that. talking about, right. We don't have therapy or aversion. To th- we don't have aversion to therapy, but um, for whatever reason, strength, it's, it's so bad that it's one of those things that I find out over time based on who interacts with my posts that's how i find out whether or not they're physically active it's not because they're telling me that they they are not advertising that explain and so um my personal posts where i am posting my own lifts the more somebody interacts with them the more i kind of figure out oh you're liking this because you understand what it is. You understand what it is that you have done something to this degree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, runners are probably the most common, but they don't tend to hit the like button on um, heavy lifts. You know what I mean? That's true. And they're, they're the ones that are just like, oh my God, I can't believe you moved that. Which That's awesome too. I totally appreciate it. But they always comment stuff like that. I'm like, okay, so you're identifying for me. It's the ones who are looking at obscure lifts. And just over time, I'm going, you're liking and interacting with posts that are not. Mm. Yeah, I'm like, you understand what this is. And if you dig a little bit, you can see like, oh yeah, I worked out today. The way that it's presented from most people who are active is like, oh, yeah, I do it for my health. I do it to 
be healthy and to lose weight or to keep weight off or to, you know, cardio capacity in general. Well, it's, it's like their eating habits. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not, it's not presented or handled in the same way as we think about like read care or equipment maintenance or number of hours in the practice room. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it's it's kind of odd because I'm going, well, I think there are more people out there who are doing some sort of some sort of resistance training as musicians, but they're shunting it off to the side and they won't call it strength training. I'm not sure. I mean, I sort of know why. Right. Because it, it's been that bad word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so long. So. And I'm guilty of this. I've got stacks of muscle magazines from years past. Like there are some of these muscle magazines that actually have some really great workouts. Um, and they, you know, and when you're learning and you don't know, and you're just looking for inspiration, like, I want to look like that. I want to have, you know, 30 inch biceps. Or, I don't know. You know, I don't math. I probably meant 12 inch. I don't have a clue. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was so just learning stuff like that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I really don't math well. So what, that's what we think. We think strength equals bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is because it's, it's the thing that we can identify with. Strength doesn't necessarily equal size mm -hmm. and you can't see it. Right. You know, so we don't, we don't think of it uh, in the same way. So like bodybuilding, we mm -hmm. think, oh, if you're in the gym and you're lifting a lot and you're lifting heavy, you're going to get big. Therefore you are a bodybuilder. Therefore strength equals bodybuilding. Not necessarily like you're lifting right. for strength and you're not bodybuilding at all necessarily. Oh no, 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 no. Like if you go yeah. back over the last couple, I mean, I do bodybuilding movements, but I'm absolutely not a bodybuilder. And you can tell just right. by looking through my posts, like right now I am chonky with an O chonky, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, a couple months ago I was, I was fairly thin. Um, and I, I still had, you know, my muscle mass or whatever, but I don't look like a bodybuilder at any point. I don't look jacked and tan, you know, <laughs> like, I, I know my body. <laughs> well, I not know at the moment. Body... <laughs> right. Right. I know my body well enough to know like, okay, I can see the muscle changes. I've got a couple clients that one of them, if you looked at her walking down the street, I mean, you would never know. Um, mm -hmm. she's really just slender, tall gal. Mm -hmm. And she's in there all the time with her two. We have three different body types. It's actually wonderful. And we got to get them involved in my husband's t-shirt business because three different body types, totally different, tall and thin, um, short and like short and super curvy and then short and like big booty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Like yep. it's perfect. But you look at all three of them. They're all very strong. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, the two shorter ones, you really don't see the muscle on unless they're like actively doing something. The tall one, you don't see it. And then she, because she's skin, skinnier, you know, once she starts trying to lift something or whatever, it's like, bam, and all of a sudden muscles. <laughs> you know right. I mean? When you're leaner, though, they stick out. But that doesn't right. mean that you're right. You're strong necessarily by itself. People right. think that, too. Like, oh, if you're shredded, you must be super strong. That has nothing to do with it. If you have very low no. body fat, that means you have very low body fat. That's it. It does not equate mm -hmm. to strength. They're totally it might mean different. like if you really want to be competitive in a strength sport, you're probably going to need to eat a little more. That, that, I mean, think about these, <laughs> think about the, uh, the, uh, the power lifters and the Olympic lifters at the Olympics. These are some bigger people, right? Mm -hmm. They, I mean, when your body fat yeah. drops that low, you actually get really weak. If you look mm -hmm. at any of these bodybuilders on the stage, the day of their competition, that is the weakest mm -hmm. point they're going to be in because they're depleted mm -hmm. and they're dehydrated. Some of mm -hmm. them, most of them. And most you of know, them. they're just because you're going for an aesthetic and you're going, that's why it's a sport. They don't stay like that. Yeah. No. And actually I want to, so I want to do two little references that I think will help if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, if you don't have like any context for this. Um, and then I'm going to jump back onto what we were originally talking about. So when we're talking about backstage bodybuilding, like stuff that you don't see, you don't understand how dehydrated and how, you know, hungry they are. Um, there's a dude on YouTube, Juji Mufu is his handle. Um, most, you know him, right, Angela? 
I think I did. You're going to have to spell that out because our, uh, the transcript made up something oh, really funny when you said that. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So say, so, say it again. How do you say it? Juji Mufu. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's how he says the Mufu part of it, but he does go by Juji. Uh, J-U-J-I-M-U-F-U. He's on, in, uh, not, he is on Instagram. He's on YouTube, though. That's his, his home base. And mm-hmm. you will find him if you type that in. But type in um, his first bodybuilding, you know, like Judy's bodybuilding, first bodybuilding comp. Yeah. And he's backstage at the amateur Olympia, I think. Olympia Ooh. or Arnold? Mm-hmm. Arnold. One or the other. Yeah. And I mean, h- hang on one second. I'm so sorry. We might. This is a Let's good time take a break. <laughs> break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Tuned and Strong podcast. Um, we were talking about the word strength and we had been discussing, um, you know, the what it takes to be a bodybuilder and what that, that low body fat percentage means for strength. Um, and I wanted to talk about, uh, if you don't know what we were taught, what Angela was talking about with like, have you seen the power lifters and the, the bodybuilders and the Olympic guys? So just the easiest way, if you don't know uh, contextually what those body types look like, and what it does to you physically. Um, go look up Juji Mufu is his handle, J-U-J-I-M-U-F-U. Um, and I'll put put the link to this video in the show notes. He has, um, but if you type it in YouTube, I think it comes up under, like real quick under uh, Juji's first bodybuilding show. And he's at uh, the amateur, it's either Olympia or Arnold, but both of those are huge for bodybuilding. And he takes you through backstage and it's so bad that he was at the end of it. I mean, he was dehydrated. Mm -hmm. He was eating. I don't think he ate for like a day or so, maybe more before. I don't know. It was, he was very fasted. There are a lot Um, of different methods to get that shrink look and to get that moisture out from under the top layer of skin. That's why they're doing that. And it was so bad. And he talks about this too, at the very end of his prep before he even went to the show. Um, he had to limit the number of steps he could take in a day in order to, yeah, in order to progress the way he wanted to, because if he took more than that, he was so underfed or his calories were so restricted that if he took more than that, um, step wise, he was too fatigued to get the workouts done that he needed to get done in order to get his building done. And if he tried to compensate by adding in even just like a hundred or 200 more calories, he goes, well, my cut stalled. That's wild. So it's, it's pretty serious. And you can see what he's dealing with backstage, excuse me, backstage. Cause you know, he goes out there and he's flexing and he's smiling and he looks, I mean, he took fifth. He did good. Wow. That's, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, but backstage, <laughs> he is just miserable. So check out that. And then compare it to go look up um, any video that's World's Strongest Man or Arnold Strongman Classic. I love the Arnold better, to be honest. Go look up mm-hmm. Arnold Strongman Classic. That stuff's all over YouTube. And look at those dudes and the kind of numbers that they're pulling. Yeah. Those are some big dudes. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all well over. I mean, you got to be pushing 400 pounds to be at top level like that. And some of them are doing that at... Six two, yeah. Which uh, four hundred pounds, and you think six foot seven, dude? Not such a big deal. Four hundred pounds when you're only six two—that's a lot of weight mm-hmm. for your system. <clears throat> um, Just to clarify, she means they're lifting that much, not they weigh that much. No, I mean they weigh that much. Oh wait, you do? I mean they weigh that much. I mean their body weight. You got to be pushing four hundred pounds. Yeah, because they're they're lifting well over a thousand on the deadlift. Oh, right. Yeah. And if you guys want to see something (laughs) insane, look, just Google world's strongest man. I mean, they're not aesthetically. You look at them and be like, yeah, not, you wouldn't, not your ideal probably. Right. But they train for a specific, like that, that is training. I don't want to say that's That's training for strength. It is, but it's a different type of strength. It is. So anyway. there's, there's all that variation in there. And we just tend to just pigeonhole the word strength into something bad. And it's almost always bodybuilding. And we almost always think about, um, and this is actually going to segue into what I wanted to talk about too. Um, we almost always think about, you know, like the high school football jock 
and how he's, you know, fat and out of shape after he graduates and like, he, cause he peaked early. Right. So he's fat and out of shape now and he's unhealthy and he's got two knee replacements and can't walk, you know, up a flight of stairs. Have- well, that's not necessarily, that's not at all what I'm talking about doing, you know, not what you're talking about doing. Mm-mm. It's, but it's that concept that we think about as when we hear the word strength, a lot of people go there. I'm like, but it's that's zero percent strength. I mean, not zero, but in the scheme of things. So this segues into another video that I want to talk about. It's free to access on YouTube. Also, it's one of the Rogue documentaries. Um, Rogue does some good stuff for documentaries, by the way. Um, but it's the one on Terry Todd. Um, he he passed recently within the last year or so but uh he was very much responsible for bringing weights into sports athletics he was a tennis player who found out that he was really strong and this is like you and i angela i think or at least me um he was told over and over and over again like you you shouldn't be lifting you shouldn't be lifting you're going to get hurt blah 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 and he turned it he's a tennis player Right. You know, and there's these photos of him and he's huge and yeah. bulky and jacked compared to these like skinny dudes. And at the time, skinny dudes were what they were thinking of because you want to be light and agile. And he was talking <laughs> about all of his coaches were talking about like, oh, you're going to get big and muscle bound. Muscle bound is the word they used. And you won't be able to move while you're competing, while you're trying to play a game. And he goes, well, I started lifting and I found that I could, my serves were better. Imagine my, that. My cardio was better. My ability to move around on the court with ease was better. Is- my speed, like everything improved because he was stronger. Strength and power that comes from lifting heavier things than just yeah. your body. Well, anyway. Yeah. I mean, and, and like we, we had the body weight conversation before, but all of that is strength. And yeah. so he, I go watch that documentary if you're listening to it. It's wonderful. Um, but that that term muscle bound, I've heard it thrown around a lot within right. um, body workers, current body workers. That's where I keep hearing that word coming back up. And it's it tends to be an old word. Muscle bound, um, you don't hear that very often. No, it's an old word. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... <sighs> You know, because you think like the big dude, then they can't they can't clap or yeah. wash their backs. You know, yeah, but right. again, can't put at that point, down. at that point, number one, something's wrong. <laughs> 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 I mean, look at Arnold, man. I mean, right. like Arnold in his prime, mm-hmm. and look at him now. I mean, you're gonna deflate. It's not right. <laughs> you don't keep it up. It's but it's he a was a bodybuilder. That yes, he was a bodybuilder. Right which is different than a strength athlete. Mm-hmm. I, but you know, when you think about it, like that's, that is what I do. So the guy that I was talking to and he's like, well, you, but you're more than that. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. But at the basis of what I do. So yes, I want right. musicians to prevent overuse injuries, but it's through right. strength training is what I say. And right. so it's, it's also yeah. not just prevent them, but overcome mm-hmm. them because when you have a muscle that is tight, it can also be yeah. weak. And if you're right. trying to increase, you have to increase your endurance. The way you increase your endurance is also through strength. And these strength can mean anything from a small movement to a compound movement, from a deadlift right. to a bicep curl, from a, from whatever. I mean, but all of right. those things play into strength because you have mm-hmm. to be strong as a musician to have the endurance to play a four hour set or mm-hmm. a two hour concert plus rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And not have your back just be killing you, et right. cetera. I mean, I had a right. session today with a keyboard player and he said, I need your help because I load in all of my equipment. Is there some basic, are there some basic exercises that I can do? And uh, what I showed him was strength training. What I showed him was, I mean, I gave him a movement assessment and he's basically, he's squatting with his knees and his low back is taking the brunt and he has no core strength. Mm-hmm. So right. I showed him how to use your hips. I showed him how to strengthen his back using just his arms. That's strength training. Yep. Just doing a prone T, you know, that's all I can do right now. Boy, does that feel good? It's because you're getting stronger. 
And I mean, what I gave him, I gave him dead bugs. I gave him bridges. I gave him prone tees and squats, basically, you know, Mm -hmm. a couple of things, but like, you don't think of that as strength training. Yes, it is. Yeah. And if you're listening to this right now and you don't know any of the words that she just said, unless you have a, like you're missing a limb or you're not able to walk or you're in like some sort of paralysis situation, Mm -hmm. you're going to be able to do everything she just said. Yeah. You will be able to do it. It's things like, well, well, I can't squat, but my physical therapist is having me stand up and sit down from a chair. That's squatting. To a chair. That's squatting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, I showed him how to, how to squat properly. Yeah. I said, I bet if he does it, he's going to, he's going to uh, over arch his lower back. And oh boy, did he I'm like, okay. So that's because you, your body doesn't understand my hips or hinges. Right. So bring the weight back over your midfoot right. to your heel. Mm-hmm. Now brace your spine. Like, so pretend like someone's gonna come up and punch you. You got to brace for impact. Okay. Now stick your butt way out, keep your weight on your heels and keep bracing and sit. And he was just like super, you know, trying to figure it out. And you could just, yeah see like, Oh, I said, that's a lot harder, isn't it? He goes, yeah. I'm like, do you, do you notice the core engagement that you have down in this mm-hmm. region? He goes, wow. Yeah, that's hard. I'm like, well, let's, let's, let's take it up a notch, do the exact same thing. Push your knees out while you do it. And his, he's like, wow, that's hard, right. but I feel so stable and my knees don't hurt. I'm like, Exactly. That's yeah. strength it- training. Just do a bunch of them. Yeah. Right. And if it's ever, if you've ever been in a body working class of any kind or a body working one-on-one, everything you're doing should sound, I mean, everything that Angela just talked about should sound real familiar. Mm-hmm. It's messing with your ability to think about and sense your own body. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. That's all. It, that was the session I did with the rock band. Yeah, was, they're, you know, I, they were very receptive, but most people, when I start them on, I have a, several foundational movements. Cause I'm like, if you don't have this, we're in trouble, you know? Um, and it's stuff. Usually people look at me, they're like, you want me to do what? I'm like, just try it. And then they start and they're like, oh my God, this is really hard. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so the rock band I was working with, very receptive to it, but same reaction this is really hard followed by I don't think I've ever felt this sensation before (laughs) and it's that's fun they're lying at this point by the way on the ground on their backs no weights in sight yep just touching their stomach and trying to flex in a very specific way but yeah and I'm like yeah it looks so innocuous but that is strength training that's strength (laughs) training it is it is. That's why I said to the keyboard player today, I'm like, it's deceptive. You're literally mm-hmm. lying on the ground. I want you to hold your low back into the floor, lift the right. leg. Yeah. Now try to like go back and forth, lift the other one. And it yeah. wasn't even both legs in the air. It was like, just lift one to the other. And he's like, oh right. my gosh. I'm like, yeah. It's deceptive. Yeah. It's simple, but yeah. it isn't easy. Right. And that is, and- if you are weak, that is going to be strength training for you. Mm-hmm. you and if you're strength. strong, that still might be strength training for you. If you're doing, if you're doing it wrong and have to relearn how to do it right body work, but it, again, for me, it's that that body work is incorporated, but strength is still what we're doing because Mm -hmm. to me, body work without strength doesn't make sense much in the same way I've talked about with my experience with physical therapy and traditional Western medicine. After I was getting out of my injury, I would get, you know, to that ceiling of yeah. my potential and then bounce off of it. And like, but I can't, I can't pass this. And I know, I know I'm capable of being up here, but I can't pass that wall. It was the same thing with body work for me. That body work got me to raise the ceiling, but I couldn't get where I knew I needed to be. And it was because the strength was missing. Mm-hmm. I, I would me. get, right. I would get, I would get to a point where it was, okay, now I can feel that this is wrong. I can feel that this part of my body is not, it's not doing the thing right. Right. How do I fix it? Well, you just kind of have to, you know, it was, it was a thing with my foot. Well, you just kind of have to walk with that awareness uh, long enough. And eventually over time, um, it'll get, it'll, it'll fix itself. 
Okay. Right? Conceivably. Through a lot of frustration. Yes. And I don't have a problem with frustration if it's going in the right direction. And that's, you know. But at the same time, there were so many other things going on that were preventing me from fixing that problem. And they were all strength-based. Yeah. And it's like we talked about in the, in the, the strength is the solution episode we did. It's that it can, it really can be that missing link because if you only stretch Mm -hmm. what's tight and you never strengthen what's weak, right? Because if something is tight, something else is going to be weak. There's a, there's a push and a pull. If your bicep does this, your, your tricep does the opposite and vice versa. There's, there's a inverse reaction there. Right. If something is tight, something is going to be weak. But if you, Mm -hmm. if you never strengthen what's weak, you're just going to be a loosey goosey mess. And you, I mean, something is always going to hurt. Right. Right. Plus beyond the muscles, the strength training, when, when we say strength training, we just mean overcoming a resistance and adapting to that resistance Mm -hmm. and then increasing your adaptation to that resistance and overcoming it and get, that's what getting stronger is. Right. When you learn to walk, your leg muscles had to get strong enough for you to, Mm -hmm. I mean, you ever see a baby pull themselves up and then they fall and they're, they're bouncing and their legs are jello and it's cute. And, (laughs) but the legs aren't strong enough to hold them. They have to build that, that strength. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we just assume like, oh, well, same way we, a lot of people, actually, I can't think of anybody who doesn't build their embouchure this way. It's just over time. You just do it over time. You do it and you do it and you do it and you do it. Yeah. But number one, if you've got a good teacher, you're taught to do it right from the get-go or you're being taught how to revamp it. Number two, yeah. you're taking breaks. It's structured strength work. And we do that for the embouchure. We don't think twice about strength to hold an instrument in like all these weird positions, you know, percussionists too, you know, all of them. And we won't, we won't touch singers yet, but we don't think twice about holding an instrument like, oh, well, you know, just over time, you're going to get strong enough. And like, it's not going to be a problem. You're just assuming at that point that the student is going to be capable of figuring out the best way to hold that and use their body to hold the instrument up. We would never do that with an embouchure. We would never do that with hand position, but for whatever reason, we're willing to just, Oh, you'll just figure it out. And to be fair, you do somewhat, but if you're, if you've got a weak link in the chain, which everybody does or overuse comes from like you do too much too quickly or too much too long you know, you mm-hmm. didn't build up that resistance and that stamina. Right. So you think like, remember thinking back when I was in high school and I would take the summer off because I was on trips and what I didn't practice. Mm-hmm. And then I go back mm-hmm. to band and I'm holding my flute for like an hour. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sore right. because I lost some of that strength and that strength mm-hmm. endurance. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's, it's, the point is that not just, I lost it, <laughs> but it's okay. like, you do have to build the strength based on the, you know, instruments are heavy. But the body is amazing and it's going to compensate if you don't have the strength to do something, it's going to compensate by shifting that strength or shifting that lack to something that's stronger. Like I was talking to a, I was talking to a horn player who's in my job security program today. We were talking about anatomy and Mm -hmm. um, how her traps were so tight. And we were talking about Mm -hmm. how she's, you know, how she shifts. I'm sorry, that's bassoon. Um, How she holds her, her horn. Okay. So if, You've got an asymmetrical instrument here and your bicep Mm -hmm. is not strong enough to hold your horn. At some point it's going to give out. So that strength has to go somewhere else where, what Mm -hmm. else, what is stronger, your upper traps. And then that's why it's tight. So does she need to increase the strength of her biceps? Yeah. Especially so it'll take, take the shift off of the trap, off the upper traps. Yeah. The stronger you are, the easier it is to play. Yeah. End of, end of story. Like as long as you're strong in the right ways, because like you can go off on your own and mess yourself up real bad, you know? <laughs> but you know, there's but, another, another part of this we hadn't talked about is that it's not just uh, the muscles. It's also like your ligaments and your tendons mm. and they all come together. And especially for um, uh, hypermobile individuals, which tend yeah, to be most female, women. most women, and apparently, as I was talking to my hand surgeon yesterday, we were talking about my thumb. Hey, look, 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 look. I know it's gross. You won't see it. But so I've got these pins in here. I got my, my thing off. Um, and so we're trying to figure out why does my wrist hurt? Why does my thumb still hurt a month after the accident? Is it broken or is it 
sprain. It turns out my wrist and my thumb are sprained and my thumb is slightly dislocated. Eh, great. So we're looking under the, uh, the x-ray and we're looking at the, the, the saddle joint right here, which is, you know, right above, I, I broke right above that on this side, but we're looking at that. And he said, now look at my hand, look at your hand. Most women have a little bit more space here and you have a lot of space. So that tells us that we've got some subluxation, which means that, you know, basically dislocated a little bit. But you're going to see this. And we were talking about um, thumb joints being um, one of the first places, especially females and musicians, get arthritis because it tends to be so mobile. And if you have laxity in a joint and it's not strengthened, he's like, we can, you can brace it. Best thing to do is strengthen it, right? The problem is when you've got ligament damage, you've got ligament damage. The damage is done. I mean, you can't. It, it, it's like, it's like a rubber band that you put in your hair. That's gotten stretched out. It's stretched out. It's not going to go back. Think of it that way. So you can't do anything about it now, but I could have done something beforehand. So if you have hypermobility in your joints, one of the best ways that you can protect those joints from going farther than they should is to be strong overall. Remind me afterwards. I've got some, um, I'd, I'd have to find them, but I have some interesting alternative medicine approaches to um, the stretched out ligaments. Love it. By the way, I have another yeah. thought. Um, comfrey. <laughs> if you guys have not heard of comfrey, um, apparently it's also called knit bone. And that's supposed to help speed the healing process. I don't know. I'm trying some other stuff. I can't vouch for it, but it's not pure stuff. So I don't know. My face looks pretty good. And I've been putting that on there. So. <laughs> it's not hurting anything. Anyway. You know. So, but I mean, it's just something to think about, like the best way for a, someone who is, and man, I trained, I trained a house full of pianists that were all hypermobile. Oh my gosh. The three of them were just, you know, all over the place, fingers bending Mm -hmm. backwards and, you know, elbows inverting and all this, the best thing that helped them. And they, they didn't Mm -hmm. stay with me because strength training is not their favorite thing. They'd rather do different things, but we had to do some corrective exercises to help bring them back to a solid state, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then they went Mm -hmm. on to bar and Pilates and all these, which are also strength building. Right. Yes. But that was the thing that got rid of their pain was that. And that was the thing that they were lacking was strength. Right. Right. I mean, my knee pain goes away when my hamstrings are not uh, deficient. (laughs) I I can't, I could do some yoga. Let me tell you with my hamstrings, you yeah. know, I, at any point in my life, I could always bend over and touch the floor because my hamstrings were so non-existent. <laughs> you know, I know. It, it led to that um, hyperextension, constant hyperextension of the knees. Um, and everybody, Oh, don't, don't lock your knees. Don't lock. I couldn't not. Oh, you'll pass out. I couldn't not lock them. If you wanted me to stand for any period of time, they're going to lock. And I didn't pass out. You know, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm not as flexible now as I used to be. Mm-hmm. I can't, I mean, I can still touch the floor, but it's not like that. You know? That's funny though. I get these guys, especially in the gym mm-hmm. and they're like, I want to be able to touch my toes. Like, why? With straight right. legs? Why? What? Right. Well, I should be able to. Like who says, when do you ever need to touch your toes when your legs are straight? Why do you need to? Right. I mean, I mean fine, but. Yeah, fine. As long as it's not. And like I said, I can still touch my toes. No problem. Right. But my I would rather people be mobile hurt. than work on their flexibility. I'd rather have them work on their yeah. mobility. Yeah. And that's usually the issue, by the way, for most people. Oh, yeah. If you don't know the difference between that, look it up. Uh, <laughs> that's another episode <laughs> right there. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's that if you're having pain, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to stretch. To... We've talked about this, too. This, this is the pro- this has been the overall theme of so many of our episodes, but it's never been the focus, you know. And right. so, yeah, please don't yeah. blindly stretch. If something hurts, don't stretch it. Right. You don't. Right. Know. No. And I was stretching and doing all the, you know, because I was really good at downward dog because I have really mobile hamstrings. We're not mobile, but really Flexible. non-existent hamstrings. <laughs> but. <laughs> My knee pain went away when I started strengthening them. And now my downward dog is not as good. I yeah. don't care. It doesn't hurt to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would take that trade off. No? Yeah. And, and now if I want to, you know, mobilize them so I get a better downward dog, that's fine. Yeah. But 
the strength has to be there first because if the pain is there nothing is happening and it's the same with music if you do not have enough strength to hold your instrument to hold your torso if you're a singer to hold your head on top of your head yes it should balance but if you have an imbalance muscularly it's going to yank on your ability to balance your head on top of your spine the answer to that is strengthening the part that's weak to correct the imbalance strength strength training yep. so if you don't have the basic strength to just be in a playing position, even without the instrument, for the duration of time that you're going to be in rehearsal or performance, you're you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, like that's just how it is. Strength. We need to eliminate that as a dirty word. Yeah, it's not a dirty word, and it's <laughs> it's it doesn't just mean what we always think it. Strength right. does not equal bodybuilding, does not equal size. It, it, they're not mutually exclusive. So, right. you know, right. it's fine. And I love what you just, what you just said. Like, if you don't have basic strength to hold your instrument, well, the body's going to compensate. Like we talked about, yeah. I have a solution for that. If, if you feel like that's you and you would like to do something about it and your students would like to do something about it and you're not in Tallahassee with Jen, you should sign up for my John job security program. because <laughs> I teach you all about anatomy, well, mobility, flexibility, and strength. There's a whole bunch of strength training, but we cover all of that. So it's like, there's, there's no excuse to, to, to not. So there you go. That's yeah. my, that's my piece. Yep. I think we beat a dead horse. <laughs> that you one, know? I hope we covered it for good. You know? Yeah. And I have another thought, but let's, let's not go down it. Cause we will, we will spend another hour if I touch that. Um, <laughs> This That's may be maybe a series, maybe a two-part series. We'll see. We um, see. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in, everyone. Um, hope, Please hope this rate and review <laughs> is what we rate need. Rate and review you. us. We need Please. that. Yes. That will help rate. us out a lot. Yes. Um, whatever platform you're on, we need that. Um, share with your friends, please. That helps us get the word out. Um, if you are in Tallahassee, like I said, I'm launching my music group. And if you don't want to be part of the class, I am happy to work with you one on one. Uh, I've also got some online slots open right now. And if you are in Nashville or interested in the uh, job security program, reach out to Angela. <laughs> hey, so just a quick side note, uh, Facebook reminded me today that uh apparently two years ago today was super bowl sunday and you and i had just recorded our first episode and that was happy two-year cons- anniversary to us i know <laughs> consequently, <laughs> consequently that was uh the only time we've met in person which is hilarious for and now then COVID happened, so whatever <laughs> you know yeah yeah for now for now we'll yeah. get there so happy anniversary to us <laughs> We, did we had no idea what was coming. We had no idea if this was going to take off or not. And I think it has been, I know we talked about this in our last episode, but that was two years ago today. And today is the third of uh, February. Yeah. So 2022. <laughs> two years. So, thank you for joining us for all these episodes. Please yeah, share, we'll see you next time. like, subscribe, rate, etc. <laughs> see y'all next time. <laughs> Hey musicians, did you know that up to 90% of musicians will experience playing related pain or injury over the course of their career? How many hushed conversations have you heard about a lingering, quote, shoulder pain or a weird tingling in your fingers or maybe low back pain or a crampy weakness or maybe you or your colleague just says, I just have to get through the gig and you watch them pop Advil like candy, maybe flush it down with whiskey. How many times have we seen something like this? So many, right? Well, it's time we start talking about our struggles, our pain, our frustrations in a private space where we don't just complain and mobilize and blindly stretch, but we learn how to strengthen our muscles, our career successes, and build each other up. I've got a brand new program that combines all of these things, and I want you to be a part of it. It's a community, not a workout. It's a community with group coaching and great content that in 12 weeks, we'll have you understanding more about your body, what you need, and how you work so you can avoid that career-threatening injury. The three 
things that musicians don't want. We don't want to be injured. We don't want to have a lack of stamina. And we don't want to be clueless, aka when you hurt, who do you go see? Just a quote doctor? Well, this program addresses all of those things. You're going to walk away with an immense knowledge of who to see. You're going to be empowered because you're going to know what to do should you ever get injured or should you have a colleague that gets injured. You will be able to actually offer appropriate advice. You're also going to learn about the body and the anatomy as it relates to playing your instrument and your own anatomy. And then you're going to learn how to build not just your strength and endurance, but you're going to learn how to design your own corrective exercise program. So I hope you will join me in this new program. It's called the Music Strong Pilot Program, Job Security for Musicians.